to the best of my understandably shaky recollection, the first time I died went something like this. That's a pretty cool first line, actually, if I do give myself some credit. What I'm going to try to do with the class is go right from the beginning, from ideas for books. A really terrific sports writer named Red Smith said, writing is easy. All you do is stare at a blank piece of paper until drops of blood form on your forehead. We'll deal with outlines. Outlines are huge. How to create a scene. Be careful of, oh, I got it figured out. I don't want to read anymore. That's death. Every short story I ever sent out was rejected. My first novel was turned down by 31 publishers. It's rare that somebody comes up with a totally fresh idea out of nowhere. You already know how to do it. Write the story. Don't write sentences. Why am I doing this? Because I've been there. It's a daunting thing to sit down and start a book. I'm James Patterson. This is my master class. Thank you so much great. for joining us. It is pretty great, right? It is, yeah. You and chills. <laughs> no, it's perfect. That's wonderful. It's a perfect and I, that setting. Was, and my for... voice was sounds so nice as opposed to what it really sounds like. It sounds very nice. I need a sound system attached to my body. That'd be, that's, there's another movie, Can right? Can you imagine just walking around talking uh, like yes, this at all times? Yes, yeah. I have a little cold, so I'm a little deeper right now. So what are we talking about? First of all, Books. I wanted to tell all these guys that you are the best-selling writer on this planet, maybe not on Mars, That's kind of tragic. or Jupiter, but on Earth for sure. So uh, that is small a tragedy, but I'll take it. Yeah. So congratulations on that, and it's really an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. And Masterclass.com features uh, little nobodies like Christina Aguilera. Yeah. Uh, Serena Williams. They're all writers. Yeah, right? you know. Yeah. Eh, and you. And Kevin when Spacey. I, yeah. Yeah. Dustin I think Hoffman. we've heard of him, yeah, Kevin Spacey. But we, when I was watching masterclass. your masterclass, oh, masterclass.com, <laughs> they told me to say that. <laughs> masterclass.com. Right. But when I watched your masterclass.com, it really, I think I told you this backstage, inspired me to and stop to talking think about. about to stop talking about writing a book and actually sit down and try to write a book. Good. Good. And the best advice, in my opinion, that you gave was when you sit down to write a book, write for one person, a woman. We'll get to that later, why yeah. a woman. But I've never thought of that, that you write for one reader. It's a way. I, I, you know, when I did the master class, I'm not trying to teach people how to write. All I'm doing is, here's what I do. You may find some of it useful. That's all. I, I, I would never suggest that I know how to tell people how to write. But here's what I do. Here are all my tricks. Here's all my thoughts. Here's what I've learned. Here's what I've learned to avoid. Um, and um, and, and then you, you make of it what you will. And speaking of avoiding, what is the number one mistake that would-be writers make? Um, I, well, I, I, you know, look, if, if, you, if you have to do it, you got to do it. I mean, there's, there's just no getting around it. Um, In terms of you have to have the passion. If you have yeah, the passion, Yeah, I mean, if you're at a certain point, you know, if you're, you're just going to have to. You, you'll have to sit down and write it. So uh, you, you, that's not a learned thing, I don't think. Um, number one mistake, I don't know, something, something, that, something that they do all the time. Uh, Probably something. I, well, I tell you, I, I, I think that the, the, the most important thing, not for every writer, but for most writers, is to do an outline first, and a, and and just and, and keep redoing it and redoing it. I will always do, you know, an outline, and it'll be four or five drafts. And if you read one of my outlines, you'll go, okay, I, I, you know, you, they're, entertain, they're entertaining and they're suspenseful and, you know, you wouldn't have to necessarily read the book. I could just sell the outlines. Yeah. Oh I could God. save a we lot of a time. New, we have a yeah. new business venture. Yeah. Outlinemasterclass.com. Yeah. What is your writing process like? Do you go to an office every day or, or is it when it grips you? Um, somebody said you're lucky if you find something you love to do in life, and then it's a miracle if somebody will pay you to do it. So that's my gig. I don't work for a living. I play for a living. I write every day. I, um, the last time I didn't write was my, my son just graduated from high school, so I went to his graduation. I didn't write that day. That's rare for me. 
But I, you know, I mean, I guess some of it is, is just being compulsive, but for the most part, um, I, I just love to do it. I love telling stories. And how did you develop this curriculum? What I liked about this group right from the beginning was every time they talked to me, they were smart. All the plans were smart and organized. And they said, look, we're, we're going to do this in two and a half days. We're going to, we'll get you with a really good director. And he was, he was really smart and really cool questions. And uh, it was painless. And, you know, somewhere in, my, in the back of my mind, I had an interest in being a teacher, but I don't really, because I wouldn't want to do it every day. But for two, two and a half days, it was really, it was a lot of fun to do. And it was a new experience I hadn't tried. I love doing things I haven't done before. Um, so I'm always breaking the rules. But look at this. I mean, this is a new uh, Alex Cross. Yeah. And a this version is a of Alex Cross that has just little announced. black dress. Yeah. Well, th here once again, this is just in the spirit of doing new things. These are called book shots. They're uh, under 150 pages, um, under five dollars, and and they are they're very cool novels or novellas, whatever. But I mean, they 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 move like the wind. Sometimes people look at it and go like, I don't know, you know. You're gonna like these. They're addictive. My wife, who's a big reader. She's read about 15 of them now, and her thing is like, give me another one, give me another one. I, and it's, you know, I, I was on the Today Show uh, earlier, and the producer, she had read two, and she said, same thing, give me another one. Um, they just, you know, it's just another way. And, you know, the publishing, your business, I mean, you're, you're innovating every day. Uh, publishing doesn't innovate. I mean, the last innovation, I, you know, the paperback back in the 1500s. Oh, the e-book e probably, right, would be the last yeah, innovation. Yeah, but that's just different form. That's not really, you know, they're just taking what was there and now you can get it online. Yeah, that's a big innovation, but the books didn't change. This is, this is a big change. And it's, I mean, in terms of the length, it's kind of the novella, but the novella never got um, developed because there was, um, there was nothing in it for writers. You couldn't, pretty much couldn't sell it to magazines, and publishers didn't want it. So we didn't really develop the novella. I sat down, and I, you know, in a year, I wrote or or did the outlines for 117. Ba Boom! Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. work a We had it. There was a there was an interviewer in the house, and I pulled out these eight drawers of book shots, mm -hmm. and he kept saying, "You're insane! You're insane, James! You're insane!" But that's how revolutions start. They all start with somebody who's insane. Yeah. And I want to go back to this for a second, um, because you really, I don't want to say that you're a fount of wisdom. Masterclass.com, masterclass.com. Because that's such a cliche. <laughs> but you really, really give out solid advice, man. Like, for example, that it takes practice, 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 practice to write. That it's not just this wisp of inspiration, the muse, you know? Yeah, you get, well, I mean, even when I go in and talk to, you know, because I, I write kids' books, too, and uh, uh, it's primarily to get them reading, but, but when I go in, I go, who likes to play soccer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you better now or three years ago? We're better now, we're better now. How come? Well, we play a lot. Yeah, exactly. Anything that you, that you want to do, you, 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 you know, what was outliers, whatever that 10,000 hours or whatever the heck it is, yeah, you get better until you hit the glass ceiling, and then it gets so sad. <laughs> You don't get any better. <laughs> and another thing that really resonated with me, and I think will resonate with both your fans and w aspiring writers, is if you don't love it, if you don't love the story, you don't love the plot, you don't love where it's going, it's not going to work. Yeah, I, well, I don't know. Once again, as I said, I do not, I, I, I'm not trying to tell people how to do what they do, and that would be a disaster. I mean, my style, is, it's colloquial storytelling. It's the way we tell stories to one another. Uh, there's not a lot of excess verbiage, and it's nothing wrong with excess verbiage, but I just don't do it. And uh, sometimes critics, you know, will kind of knock that. And I, I, the thing I'd always love is for critics to write down the two or three stories that they tell to other people that they know are really cool stories. There's probably no good sentences in there, but the stories are really good. That's kind of what I do. I'm writing stories. I'm not. I'm. I'm not as. You know, I'm a master stylist. But, but, but I love to tell stories, and I think I've gotten, you know, pretty good at it. I think your uh, Alex Cross oh, okay. series would definitely attest to that, I just, yes. I just saw Morgan today. He was, he was at the Today Show. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, gonna, I was I'm going to get a little earring now, too. That's what, that's what you <laughs> old guys do. 
going to get earrings, man. Well, you, you've, you're very open about how when you started out, 31 publishers rejected you, and I bet all 31 of them are very sorry about <laughs> that today. Well, but every once in a while, I'll get a, uh, a, you know, a, from one of the editors, would you read, you know, and I, I do read them, but it's sort of funny, you know. But what made you persevere? Well, for starters, back then there were a lot of publishing companies, so it happened very quickly. It wasn't like over the course of three years. And um, most of the rejections were kind. Send us your next book, blah, 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 blah. You know, so they weren't evil. And then you know, within four weeks, I did get this big acceptance. And you know, I'm 26 years old at the time. So I'm a kid, so anything, I mean, a, a, a nice rejection to me is like, okay, you know. The, I, I remember um, um, uh, the Edgar people, the Mystery Writers of America, called up, and um, uh, they told me, you know, you're, you're being nominated for an Edgar, and they told me the date, and I said, oh, I can't come. I don't remember what the problem was. And she said, oh, no, you, don't you understand you've been nominated? And I said, you don't understand, I, I can't come. And she said, you have to come, you won. I said, all right, I'll find a way. <laughs> But, but then y you get there and you're still wondering, like, was she lying? Was she just trying to just learn? To get me over here. But I remember when I when I got up on the stage, um, I, I I did say, I guess I'm a writer now, because I felt that um, okay, this 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 proves it somehow, and and that just goes to show you how insecure we are when we're writing a book, or you know, certainly when you're going to start, when it's like, oh my God, th am I am I that stupid? I mean, I, I'm the, you know, this is. I'm, 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 I am not worthy. I am not worthy. You know. Well, what do you? Of course, I am not worthy. But you know. <laughs> really. Really. By the way, the Edgar is the Oscars of crime novels, yeah. so or mysteries. Yeah. So he, you are very worthy. I was worthy when I was young. Yeah. Well, you're only 29 now, so I don't know what yeah, you're talking that's about. Yeah, But when you sit down to write, do you, you have your outline in hand? How do you know if the opener works of your book? Uh, I, the key to the outline, is, in fact, one of, the, one of these book shots, mm -hmm. it's, it really lays out what I try to do. It's called 113 minutes. And it's not 113 minutes in real time. It's 113 minutes over like five months. And the first scene is like four minutes and 13 seconds or whatever the heck it is. And this woman rushes to the school and she finds that her son is overdosed and is dead. The second scene is like two days later, and it just goes like, and it's just all these key, super dramatic scenes that tell this story, and and that's what I try to do. I mean, the thing about book shots, all thrillers, no fail. Speaking of book shots and master class, one of the cool things that we did in the last few months is we had a contest on, I think there's something like 60,000 people have taken my class, which is a lot. You know, if you're at a university and 60,000 people have taken your class, you know, the school would be rolling in money. Um, but, um, but we did a contest, and we, so I, I said I would, you know, for book shots that we'll, we'll bring in, and I'll write a book with, a, with somebody. And we had, I don't know, several thousand applications, people. And then uh, they brought me about 30, because they went through a lot of them, because as much as I'd like to, I'm not going to go through several thousand of them, you know. Um, and, and, and actually, the, the winner is here today. There she is. Keisha, yeah. All right. Keisha, Keisha Ball. So uh, I told Keisha, I called her up, and I said, good news and bad news. Good news is that you won, and bad news is we're going to be working together. So, uh, <laughs> But she had a wonderful idea, and, and she's a good writer, so I think it's going to be a really a lot of fun, and it'll be a cool book, and we'll bring it out yeah, within the next year. And Keisha, do you have your outlines ready? Yeah, we've already... She's she, on point. Yeah, we've been talking about the outline. We've talked about the outline a couple of times already. Now, tell me why you think a female is your ideal reader when, you, when you're writing for someone in your head. Uh, I, that's just being practical. Yeah, I mean, there really... Um, I, I, there's two, par two parts to it. One, I was brought, in a ha brought up in a house full of women. Mother, grandmother, three sisters, two female cats. And the puzz and the, the purr and the buzz are, they're all, they're still in my head. So I just, I'm just better with that. 
Generally speaking, I like talking to women more than men. I'm okay with sports, but I don't want to talk about them all day. I'm okay with business, but I don't want to talk about it all day. I don't care about the root. Men love to talk about roots places, you know. Do you take 32 or 41, you know? I don't. Um, so I'm, I'm more comfortable. Uh, so that's a piece of it. Um, the other piece of it is, you know, 70% of the people who read books are women. So, you know, just common sense. Uh, you should at least be, well, no, you don't have to, but that's what I do. What? And once again, that's the whole thing. I, that's what I do as opposed to what anybody else should do. Yeah, but you're giving people a real glimpse into your process, which I is have done such that, a yes. treat. Yeah. I mean. It's a, it's a fun class, I must say. I mean, it, it is, um, and, and, and the, the, you know, unlike Trump uh, University, uh, one, it doesn't cost $28,000, and, um, uh, and, and the responses of people is, is really, really, really positive. You know? What is the one book that you go back to most often, either that you've written or someone else has written? Um, well, 100 Years of Solitude, I've, I've done that three or four times. I actually, I keep going back to Ulysses, hoping that I'll actually understand it one of these days. Uh, I'm a big both. James Joyce fan. I, Finnegan's Wake is, I wouldn't even consider that one. I tried the first 20 pages, several, that's, you know. Um, Mr. Bridge and Mrs. Bridge, uh, two different books, Evan Connell Jr. It's, it's the weirdest thing in the world. It's just like this really boring family in Kansas City. And each one, it's, it's the, the, the mother's point of view on, on their life together, and then the father's point of view. And nothing happens, but it's wonderful. It's just, it's great storytelling, great writing, very tense. You know, like my, my um, uh, Michael Conley, who's a very good mystery writer, he says what Jim does is every single chapter moves both the plot and the characterization forward and turns on the uh, movie projector in our heads. Um, and, and Evan Connell does a little of the same thing. Not that heavy on the plot, but the plot's more subtle, obviously, in, in Mr. Bridge and Mrs. Bridge. And I know that you brought up The Great Gatsby in your class. Yeah, Gatsby, and then um, there was a writer uh, um, who wrote Steps and Painted Bird, uh, also, you know, very tight. Uh, I, I, I like very tight, uh, Alice Munro's short stories, you know. And now before we turn it over to the audience, I want to ah! bring up, uh, before, before you get the really tough question. Yeah, I know. I do want to bring up the fact that I don't know how much you guys know about the charity work that this man does, you are such a champion of independent booksellers that just congratulations. <laughs> I mean, huge, 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 huge hats off to you if I was well, wearing a hat. Partly it makes life simpler if you just go, okay, what we do, Sue and I, is it's all education oriented. So reading, we have, I don't know, 400 and some scholarships for teachers, I think at 28 universities, so we have that. Um, we, this is interesting just in terms of, of how uh, extreme the need is. Last year and this year, we were working with Scholastic and we put out a lot of money. Um, and we said, you know, for school libraries, we got 28,000 pleas for help in 10 days. Um, and almost all of them are the same, saying we haven't been able to buy books in 10 years. Uh, we don't have, there's no librarian. <coughs> so, yeah. That's tragic. I know. I know, I know, I know. It, and, and, and part of what, what, what I try to do is um, do things where we're going to help, but we're also going to draw attention to the problem, like independent bookstores, where everybody goes, oh, I love our little store. Well, you got to go in it sometimes and buy a frickin' book. Instead of buying it discounted from and Instead of just major, walking by yeah. it. Oh, I love to walk by that store. It's too bad it's closing down because nobody ever goes in there. You know? But what prompted you to do all this? I, I think the way I grew up, uh, it, was, it was a kind of a give back thing. You know, I've been poor, I've been middle class, I was poor again, middle class again, and I'm rich, and in retrospect, I prefer being rich. Um, yeah, but, um, yeah but, but, but it's really, it's, it's important to have gone through the whole thing. Uh, grew up in Newburgh, New York, tough little, well, when I was growing up there, uh, Look Magazine called it the All American City. Now it was ranked, I think, the fourth most violent small town in America. It's coming back. It'll come back. But, I mean, it's, it's just fascinating the way stuff goes. But you've donated how much money now to the independent bookstore cause? 
I don't know. Millions. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, we're yeah, doing, it's, 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 yeah. We're talking like major impact. Uh, well, some impact, yeah, for sure. God, you downplay everything, man. I'm like, you're the best-selling author on earth. You're I, like, I think, eh. you know, I think that's another thing about, you know, the way you're, you're, the way you're brought up. And, and our son, one of the things, and I think he's really doing well. He's 18 now. And, you know, he's like, it's, he's fine with the fact that I write best-selling novels. And he, that's good. He's happy for me. He's happy that, you know, he get, I get him to buy him stuff occasionally. But he, but he doesn't, it's like, he, do, he's, he doesn't have to pee on it, and he doesn't have to, like, you know, it's like, it's good. Uh, it's, but I think that's a nice perspective on it. If you could invite four authors, living or dead, over for dinner, who would it be? Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, Mark Twain. Um, I'm, I'm uh, well, I, I, Joyce, I guess it'd be fun. Uh, you could ask him about Finnegan's Yeah, Gertrude Wake. Stein, she, you know, she seemed to be good at parties and dinners and stuff. And... Uh, uh, I don't know who the fourth one would be. I have to think about that a little bit more. We'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, uh, our audience. Hey, James. It's so cool that you're here hey. and oh, to hear you speak about everything. And I like what you said about practice. Do you think it's okay to take unpaid writing gigs to hone your skills? To what? To take writing jobs that are not paid to practice. I think you just do what you, you do. I, I don't know. I'm never really worried about stuff. I just kind of, if it feels right, I'll, I'll do it. So uh, I try not to get too hung up. I mean, for me, most stuff, it's, the decisions are pretty easy. It's either a yay or a nay. And I, you know, so if it feels okay, I, I just don't like to sit there, oh my God, you know, just do it. I, certainly, you know, earlier, you know, when I was a kid. I mean, I, I worked in advertising, you know, but I've been clean for over 20 years. <laughs> And you were in a Trappist monastery. <laughs> yes, I, I spent uh, 12 days in a Trappist monastery. And that was a key thing for me. I mean, a little piece of it was um, eh, a little drugs and stuff. And I just showed up at the Trappist monastery in, in Kentucky and, um, and, and then let me stay. And at the end of 12 days, I just went, you know, I, I want to be a writer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go at it full bore and I've made up my mind, and I know what I have to do, and uh, no, we're not smoking pot or anything else anymore. For the, and for the most part, that's been, that, that I've held to that. Next question, please. Hey, James, such hey. an honor having you here. Uh, so when it comes to developing your characters for your uh, books, what mm -hmm. was the process like for you? Well, as, I've, as I say in the master class at masterclass.com, um, I, um, <laughs> outlines are really key. And the outline, it, 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 there's a couple of things. And, and going back to Connolly's quote, where every chapter develops both the, um, the, the, you know, the plot moves forward and the characterization. So uh, the, um, I, in fact, I was just on the way over here, and we're, we have a deal with CBS. I guess it's okay to say CBS. Um, so we're talking to them about a couple of the bookshot things. And... and um, my partner who's out there, I said, look, I, I think there's two things we have to communicate about this one series that, that we have, which I think is a really interesting series. I said, one is, what's different about the action of the series? And the other thing is, what's different about this main character? What's really different about this main character? Um, and, I, and I think that's all, you know, like, and, and I'm not afraid to like, you know, I, I don't write realism, obviously. So Alex Cross is too good to be true, but you know that's okay. I, I wanted to write a larger than life African American character, uh, and he's larger than life, and he's, he was meant to be. Michael Bennett. I mean, who the hell has ten kids? And you know, but I like that. It was like it's like a huge challenge. We're going to do it, and we're going to make it kind of believable. Uh, but that that's one of the things that obviously would make him different if he has to deal with ten kids and go out there and be a New York City cop, and you know. Da -da. Hi, James. Um, Hi. My sister and I, big fans. I just wanted to ask you a quick question about Alex Cross. Any chance we're going to get any kind of manga in it, just like you did with Maximum Ride? Any chance what? You're going to get it into the comic book form, like for manga? Um, I haven't never really thought about that. So, uh, possible. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, um, you know, I think one of the tricks there is Paramount kind of owns it, so it's very limited. You know, at one point, I wanted to get 
uh, the woman's, you Lindsay Boxer and Bob with Alex, not romantically, but just, you know, and they went, you can do it, but we'll then own the Women's Murder Club. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> um, so it's tricky. It's tricky, but maybe, maybe. Yeah. And last Here's question, a, please. Hi, James. Hey. Uh, I'm a big fan of your work, and I think one of the things that I appreciate the most is the pacing and how you're just able to keep a story moving along uh, and keep it so engrossing. I was wondering what your process is like for that and also how you decide what to cut. And what's well, go. uh, you know, Elmar Leonard, who's a really good mystery writer, um, somebody asked him, you know, when did he go from being not selling all that well to really, you know, best selling? And he said, when I started, um, I stopped writing the parts that people skim. And uh, there's just a lot of, uh, I mean, this is the key here. This is all thriller, no filler. It's just, you just cut out all the stuff that people don't particularly want. And you just have to be honest with yourself. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I mean, when we, you, how do you tell stories? I mean, you learn to just cut it down to, uh, you know, the, 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 the beginning, the middle, and the end, and, 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 and tell the story very succinctly. So, so that's, that's kind of what I try to do. And then it's tough because sometimes you know you're, you're cutting chapters. You go, oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, but it didn't really didn't really move the story very well. Or ooh, that paragraph was yeah, but it, you know, it really kind of slowed everything down. You know, I have one writer that I work with. He's very funny, and uh, but he would put this funny shit in the middle of like some really tragic you know, emotional. And you go like, no, dude. I mean, this is like it's not working. It's funny, but I mean, it doesn't fit in that scene. You know. So. And back to our. Last question. The fourth writer that you would invite. Master, oh. To yeah. the master class. Master, uh, yeah, David Rogier. Uh, fourth writer. Well, I'm going to invite you since you're, you know, you like to come to that group, right? Sure. Happy. Oh, I'd you're love in. that. You're in. And it's available at masterclass.com. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. Thank you.